Well, hello everyone, and we're back in the shop today, out here in the garage. Now I'm getting the uh, 4R70W transmission for the 2003 Mustang project uh, back underway, and I just got the parts in that I am needing. I've got uh, two more orders coming in, should be here uh, sometime within the week. Oh, we got a brand new Borg and Warner overdrive band. Got a new reverse servo piston. And this is called the three ringer. There's a one, two, and three. This one has the three rings on it. We have the uh, overdrive servo. But it's going to get a modification, and we'll talk about that just a little bit later. One to two uh, piston and cover, and two to three piston. So that's all the pistons that'll go in the bottom of the uh, transmission. So in the kit, we have all our new gaskets and O-rings and lip seals and uh, metal clad seals and there's a cork gasket, um, ceiling ring kits, uh, the sub kit, everything we need in here to put this transmission back together. Now as you see, I also have uh, the new clutches. They are Ray Bestus and the new Ray Bestus steels. Uh, whenever you're rebuilding the transmission, there's no need of reusing the old steels. Go ahead and get new ones and put it in. Also, always make sure that you uh, use a name brand or some decent brand uh, components to go back in the transmission. It's just too much trouble, you know, to tear a transmission back down and put it back together. And that's why I went with good old Borg Warner, Ray Bestus parts. Um, there's some Parker parts in here also. So, you know, go ahead and just use the best that you can get. You can go out there and get uh, kits for $140 that you can rebuild this transmission with well i can already tell you they're, they're not the best quality this kit here with the uh the clutches all the gaskets o-rings the band all the pistons and accumulators runs at about 300 bucks and i got these from uh jimmy Wimson over at uh, transmissionbench.com he puts together a nice kit and he's done a lot of good things on YouTube, helping people to build transmissions. So, you know, he's not that far from me. He's only down in Georgia. So I order my parts from him. Now, in our teardown video, we talked about the overdrive piston and the bore that's in the case. Well, you know, this is the... Uh, original piston that came out of it and that overdrive piston is constantly working it's clicking in and out especially when you slow down and speed up you know so it's uh it gets a lot of action and the purpose of this is that when the pin the piston goes in it applies the overdrive band and locks that hub well this pin is a very hardened pin uh, it's you know it's it's a lot harder <laughs> than this material is in so with this constant up and down there is a little bit of slop in there now if I take this pin and stick it up here in the reverse band 
that thing is solid tight it's you know no play whatsoever but in the uh, overdrive bore there's some side to side slot it's just a little bit it's it's not a whole lot but you know you take your transmission to a car uh, a transmission shop what they'll do they'll drill this out and put a brass bushing in there and then you know same hardened pins go back into that brass bushing and what happens 50 60 70 thousand miles down the road that brass bushing gets wore out just like this case is so the only thing you can do is knock that bushing out put a new one in it well there's a way to uh fix that and that's one of the pieces that i'm waiting on for this transmission is i have ordered a new pin by sonics and it actually has o-rings on it that seals to both sides of this and up here on this shaft it'll have an o-ring so we're going to have to modify this opening we just need to come in here and just take a file and bevel that a little bit so that when we put the uh, new pin in that o-ring can go in there and we'll seal that will stop any fluid leaking by so what is the problem with fluid leaking by well when the forward clutch drum is activated it also fills this chamber with fluid and pushes this piston this away towards the camera and what that does is releases the overdrive band well something's going on there is that fluid starts leaking back through the pin and the bore so the over uh, the forward clutch loses pressure and also the uh, overdrive band is not pushing out far enough and it causes it to burn the band and burn the forward clutches so the best fix is with the modified pin that will uh, go in there and seal that bore and keep any fluid from leaking by also it's a good idea to replace this snap ring that is around here that holds that piston in place these snap rings will break they'll shatter we've seen them when we even took the valve body out that the piston is laying on top of the valve body because the snap ring is completely gone now all the metal particles drop down into this slot into this bore and get into your valve body and locks the valves up and the valve body locks them open and then you might lose uh three to four shift or well anything like that can cause you know problems now even the uh the new overdrive um servo has a brand new pin in it I can mic both of these and they're exactly the same size so there's no wear on this old pin whatsoever so again the only fix is to put a sonic style uh, main pin in there and that'll stop the leakage okay I've got the uh, direct clutch from the bench and uh, we're going to take it back apart and go ahead and rebuild it take the snap ring off I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, drum out just to make it a little bit easier pull out our end plate all the old clutches and steels spring cage, a bearing and a washer. And we need to pull the uh, last out. And we'll go ahead and remove the piston. 
Now this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to just inspect the uh, direct cage, make sure there's nothing wrong with it, make sure it's all uh, good and slick on the inside. I'm looking in there at the uh, bushing, the bushing looks fine, I see no wire, there's no wire inside this. You will see two grooves where the uh, ceiling rings ride at, that is normal. You will have some grooves in there that's not from the ceiling rings, that's from the way it's made. And everything looks good. No problem. Now, the reason why I tell you to save the old seals and gaskets, this way you can uh, match them up with your new ones. Although these were in pretty bad shape. But it's pretty much easy to tell which seals go on the direct drum. They are the smallest lip seals that's in the uh, package. These are the two old ones that was in it. As you can see, they were in pretty bad shape. Also note, we have two, three, four, five, we'll need six friction discs and six steels. Okay, so here we see we got our new direct clutch seals. And there's the old one. You see they're basically the same size. So it's always good to, to keep your old gaskets for verification. And this is the top of the piston. That's the bottom. So we're going to install the new seals. And when you install this and install it with, if you look, you can see that seal has a bevel. It's, it's, that's why it's called a lip seal. And these are going to be a little bit wider than what the uh, old seal was. And that's no problem. That's real good. So when you install these, make sure you install it with that bevel down. Outside one, now the smaller one goes into this lip down here on the bottom. Now you gotta make sure you don't get it in the snap ring that's on one on further down where it goes. You just need to use a little small screwdriver or a pick and you can work that right in. There we go, no problems at all. I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, transmission uh, goop. This is a lubrication just for transmissions. Right to the inside of this drum here. 
and the reason why I like to use transmission goop um, I know a lot of people use uh, Vaseline or bearing grease and that'll work I mean it'll work with no problem but I much rather use something that will mix with the oil a little better than uh, what bearing grease would mix with bearing grease takes a little longer to break down and we're gonna take our piston apply a little transmission fluid to it so I'm gonna lubricate the uh, in a bore and we'll put a little bit on this seal in the bottom getting it sealed up is the uh, getting it moved, lubed up is the uh, the main key to this now you just can't take this and push it in because of this seal. We take this seal and we'll compress it with our hand like this. <clears throat> so all I got is a 16 thousandths filler gauge and you take a wet stone and you knock the uh, edges off and kind of round them over a little bit that way they're not sharp so you don't have to worry about it uh, nicking the uh, the gasket or you don't have to worry about it nicking the lip seal so we're just going to Push this in here and give a little down pressure as we're working this around. And if you feel where it feels like it's hanging up, stop and go somewhere else and try it. And then you see our piston is all the way down. It was no problem at all to get in. This filler gauge helped us get that lip seal compressed together while you're pushing down on it. Went down with no problems whatsoever. We inspect our spring cage. Make sure the springs are not bent or cracked or broken. All those look good. We can set them back in place. Now we can go over to the press press this in and put that snap ring in okay so we got the direct clutch under the press we'll get it centered up That wing can be a little bit tough to get on sometimes. All right. Okay, with our piston and uh, spring housing back in place, I'm going to drop the uh, thrush washer to the bevel on the bottom you want that to go on first and then we have the 
thrust bearing that we're going to want to put on and one way to test how these are working lay it down in the palm of your hand and take the back roll it back and forth see if you feel any chatter or any bumps or anything in it and if you don't it's pretty much good to go so we're going to apply some transmission fluid into the bearing okay then we're going to drop it onto the direct drum assembly with this little nub sticking up checks good we're going to reach over to our kit and you want the smallest friction disc that's in there and that would be these right here in the middle and you should get six of them two three four five six and we'll lay them aside same thing with the uh, seals you're gonna, again you're going to get the small so we're going to want these right here And if you notice, they have Ray Best just written on them. Wish that won't be on there long. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to take our six friction disc. Look them over real good. They look completely fine, and we're just going to soak them in some transmission fluid. We do not want to put these in dry. Some people just drop them in and leave them. But you don't have to do that. All you got to do is, is get them wet. Right, so now we're going to install a steel directly against the uh, piston. Then a friction disc, another steel, another friction, another steel, another friction, another steel, another friction. Another steel, another friction, last steel, and the last friction. The last plate you put on should be a friction disc. Now we're going to put in our spacer plate, our end plate. Okay, now that all the clutches are in, the end plates in, we can go ahead and put our snap ring in. You can do that by hand. Make sure it's uh, under each one of them. And that looks good. Now we can take our hub. goes so our direct clutch is all finished and we'll test it a little later so I went ahead and got the output shaft and I was going to uh, put the direct clutch pack on it so I can uh, just test it I haven't replaced the ceiling rings yet on this but look what I see See this o-ring seal is in the right spot but this seal is in the 
fluid patch is pulled. It's supposed to be here. So that thing is not even in the right spot. Maybe that's why the transmission uh, burnt the uh, thing up. I don't. I just don't know. That's kind of funny looking to see that. Um, you know, taking it off, it should have pulled it off this way, not pushed it back on further. That's kind of interesting. I'll take a little bit of this uh, trans lube. And I'm going to fill this up right here because this will give, a, give us a pretty good seal. I got our air pressure at about 40 pounds and what we're going to do is apply air to this hole right here. our clutch is working all right so that's finished up with the uh, direct clutch once the direct drum is uh, put together and tested we should have an end gap from this end plate to the bottom of the snap ring from 60 to 90 thousandths and I'm getting uh, 60 thousandths right there so that's that the minimum setting which is fine because you know things are going to wire and that gaps going to increase so that concludes the uh, direct clutch pack now we'll move on to the forward clutch pack okay I got a, a forward clutch pack we'll go ahead and remove the components like we did previous If you remember the previous video, our old seals are completely shot. Um, the inner seal is there so we can verify the diameter, but you really can't do nothing with what's left of that. <laughs> so that's no problem at all. This is the back side. So we'll start out with. Uh, making sure our lip seal is pointed downwards as we install it into the uh, clutch disc There we go, now we see our lip is uh, pointing downwards. We'll do the uh, outer seal the same way.
Now getting this piston in can be a little bit of a chore because uh, we're dealing with two seals at the same time so make sure we put plenty of lubrication on the uh, seals and on the outer edge of the drum and the center board of the drum. Same we love Drop the uh, we'll apply just a little down pressure and we're gonna stick our Fill a gauge in here. And there we go. The clutch disc is in place. Now we set our return spring on, our retainer, and we'll go put our snap ring in. Okay, we've got everything ready to uh, go down with it. And there we go. So we'll be using our wavy steel and we'll uh, go ahead and insert it in and we'll be using the original end plate and this knee has a step on one side and flat on the other so we'll go to our kit over here and we'll get five frictions and five steels going to soak our friction disc like we did before and you don't have to leave it in there long just 
get them all good and wet. This way, the friction material absorbs the transmission fluid and they expand a little bit and that helps in getting your in play correct. Now we'll just stack up our clutch pack. We'll put a steel in first, followed by friction of the steel. Another friction, another steel, another friction. Steel, friction, one more steel, the last friction, and then we'll put our end plate on. And now we can install our snap ring. In play here should be from 52 to 90 thousandths. I got about 89 thousandths. So that concludes our forward clutch pack. Okay, we have our reverse drum and mechanical diode, and as I said before, this snap ring is real bad for fouling, so we'll be replacing that with a different type of locking system. Also, our mechanical diode, that thing is kaput, it does not work, so apparently it froze up, so we will be replacing that. Okay, we'll remove our snap ring, end plate, all the uh, clutch discs, which again are in excellent shape, they almost look like new, but we're going to replace them. Pull out our end plate. Now this snap ring is a wavy snap ring that's in here. And it's one of the toughest snap rings in this whole transmission that is a pain to work with. It's very thick and wavy. You just have to use a combination of different screwdrivers to get this thing started coming out because this one is kind of fell right in a bad spot to get the uh, thing started. And there it goes. You can see how thick this thing is and its wavy shape makes it very hard to remove and install. And we're going to pull out our Belleville return spring. You notice that it's disc shape 
and these tanks point towards next we're going to take out our apply ring and we'll pull out our piston there's always a check ball in these pistons if you shake it you can hear that piston that check ball move if that check ball does not move you need to clean it out find out what's going on with it that one's in good shape So here's the old uh, straight cut seals or the uh, reverse piston. Um, they look in excellent shape, but you know we'll replace them. Here's the new ones. Now these do not have a lip. These are straight cut seals. So we'll just simply reinstall the new ones. the inside one in first then we'll install the outside one Lubricate the inside of the drum around the inner and outer edges with uh, assembly lube. And we're going to lubricate all O-rings with transmission fluid. Now unlike the lip seals, we're just going to take this and press it right on into the bore. You don't have to use any uh, filler gauges to put the seal in. Just going to take a screwdriver and we're going to go back and forth and side to side. And there now our piston is all the way down at the bottom. We're gonna reinstall our apply ring. Our Belleville return spring with the tangs pointing down onto the apply ring. And then we're gonna get this wavy snap ring back in there. And like I said before. It is a job.
and there we go it is in there just to make sure that you push these down and get all those underneath the uh, tangs that stick out into the snap ring groove all right we can now assemble our clutch pack into the uh, reverse drum and we'll start out with this end plate as a has a beveled edge in it and this so it'll apply to the uh, Belleville spring and we'll get that set in now our reverse drum has two steels and three frictions when you go to the kit you're going to find three steels and four frictions so we're only going to use two steels and three frictions I'll get these soaked in transmission fluid <coughs> so we'll go ahead and apply friction steel another friction another steel the last friction and our end plate now if you notice this is recess dip it from the bottom one put that in and we can get our snap ring in place and there we go the reverse drum in gap should be 40 to 58 thousandths I was measuring about 46, which is great. Now that we got three of our four clutch packs put together, I kind of want to show you the stack up of how this thing looks when it's inside the transmission. But we're going to do it outside the transmission. Just give you a better understanding how everything is put together inside that drivetrain of the transmission, which you wouldn't normally see. It all starts with the output shaft and ring gear. This is the bearing that will go from the case to the uh, ring gear. We just want to set it aside. Drop this down in our hole here. So that will hold it good and stable. Next is going to be our ring gear to direct clutch bearing it sits on here like this and our direct clutch goes right in as you spin freely next is our planetary this gear drive should fall into the uh, gear drive in the hub. And you see how good and free that spins. Our next item will be our sun gear and 
and we're going to lubricate the uh, one way clutch. Our next piece will be our center support. Lubricate it real good. Should we put it up here? I need to lubricate the inside also. Need to make sure that this goes all the way down. Our next part will be our drive shell. We'll drop this bearing in there. We'll put our immediate shaft in. next part we're going to take our input shaft with forward drive gear and place a bearing on the drive shell We'll take our reverse hub, drop it down over the input shaft and forward hub. Have to get those splines lined up. Now we'll take the forward half. Then we'll put our pump on. Make sure that your plastic brush washer is on. And that's what the drive assembly looks like after it's put together inside the transmission. Your reverse band will sit here. Overdrive band will fit around here. Now I'll disassemble that because we still got to rebuild our front pump and then put all our ceiling rings on the various parts. Now, as mentioned previously, our mechanical diode had failed on this particular unit. And, you know, like I say, it's both a turn counterclockwise and not turn clockwise. Well, this one, as I said, doesn't do anything. So I had to order another one. And we have it in. And this is a new one. And as you see, there's a different type of snap ring other than the old thin snap ring that normally comes with it.
and you see it turns one way but will not turn the other way this is the back side like I say these are not serviceable you cannot take them apart and work on them and they won't go on but one way you cannot install it backwards close the case and the splines will lock together so hence the turn diode you know diode lets current go one way and not the other way this will let torque go one way and not the other way. Now the uh, snap ring that we're going to use is a spiral snap ring. We have this lock collar. You see it has a lip around it. And that's going to sit right on there. And these are what's called one time use snap rings. And you can see it's a spiral. So what we'll do We'll get it started. Now the snap ring is down inside this groove here. Well, it's hard to see since it's black. But that spiral snap ring is now inside this lip. Then what we're going to do, the instructions say, in six places is to uh, bend this over around six places and that locks that snap ring in there that's why it's a one-time use once you bend it over you won't be able to take it back off now if I first you know remember right the first uh, use of the mechanical diodes and transmissions came out sometime around 1989 uh, before then they just used a one-way roller clutch which is not compatible with this drum. It's a completely different drum that uses the one-way roller clutch. Okay, as I said before, uh, you know, we got a problem with the pin bore it is out on the overdrive servo. The only thing out of all this we're going to use is this spring. We'll be replacing the overdrive servo the new overdrive pin will be replaced and the snap ring will be replaced these snap rings do have failures and they'll break normally right across where it's uh, cut out for your snap rings these will break and find their way into the valve body so all this will be replaced This is our new overdrive servo that we'll be using and we'll be replacing this pin with this pin. This is the Sonics 76833E and this is a repair part for the 470W transmission. Now, as you can see, this pin, unlike the other pin, is modified. There's an O-ring gap here, and there's an O-ring gap here. Inside this package are two small O-rings and a washer. Now, if you use this washer, this gives you a firmer 3-4 to four shift. We probably will not use that. But 
but you have a small o-ring that'll go on this groove and a larger o-ring that'll go in this groove that'll help seal that bore when this new pin is installed and you won't have no leakage but to use this we have to get inside this bore and modify the edge of this bore a little bit and what I'll be doing is using a rat tail file just to go in and chamfer that bore a little bit at the opening then I'll go back behind it with a half round file that's small and to clean it up a little bit then I'll hit it with a little sandpaper around it and then we'll clean that out and get all the filings out that way it'll, it'll allow the o-ring to slide in a little bit you know easier without cutting it and I'm gonna do the filing of that off cam for output shaft and ring gear and we'll remove the bearing and what we need to do is replace these three ceiling rings if you look here you can see there's three rings here in a row and these are um, hook type as you can see and all we need to do is squeeze them together that one hook then we can remove these off of our shaft you just have to open them up a little bit and pull them right off then we can remove the uh, snap ring here from the ring gear located here is the ceiling rings for the uh, direct clutch and we'll need to get those off This shows just how good that assembly lube works when I t tested the uh, direct clip pack. It really sticks these rings together. So in a overhaul kit, there's going to be a package called ceiling rings. And this is where we'll find our five ceiling rings you can see the two orange ones and the three large ones as you can see these are cut so that when they go together there is no end gap I'll take off this one Make sure that when they go on, 
that you have the splice on the right side so that they'll seal up. Go ahead and apply a little fluid to them. We'll take our ring gear and put it back and reinstall our output shaft. Put our snap ring back in place. We'll go in the bag and we'll get all three new ceiling rings. We can install our new ceiling rings. You can see here how it's got the snap hook so when it goes together it locks in place. One of them. The second one. And the third one. And we'll go ahead and coat those with some fluid. Take our ring gear to case bearing and we'll go ahead and lubricate that. And drop it down on there and that'll be ready for installation. Okay, I have our input shaft and forward clutch assembly. And down here there is two Teflon rings the ceiling rings that have to be replaced and these do not have any end gap in them it's a continuous wing so we'll need to take a let's see if it's even possible to get these off so we're going to take a razor knife and we're going to just cut these right off There's no saving those to be reused. You have to cut them off. That's one of them. And there's our second one. So inside the ceiling ring kit, you'll see the two new white Teflon rings. And these will not just slide over there. you got to kind of take them and stretch them out just a little bit. You can get them to go down over that lip.
be patient. Work with it. Compress them back together by hand once you get it on. They will shrink up a little bit, but just keep uh, compressing it by hand until you get them back in the correct shape. And then we'll lube them up and slide the pump over it, and that'll help to uh, seal them. And we'll take our second one, do it the same way. Okay, we got our second one on there. Keep compressing it. some lubricant to them. Get them centered up the best you can. Now we're going to take our pump stay. Put some fluid into the bore. those rings without cutting them and there we go since we always have a stator on the table we can got a pump, a spring cage, and we'll start by removing the pump rotors. We'll lay them right over on the table. We'll go ahead and take out the piston. do now is remove this metal clay and seal from the front. I've already checked our bearing and our um, bushing in there looks fine, no problems at all. Prop this up on two pieces of 2 by 4 Alright, we need to take this seal out. Get it out of the way. Of 
we'll go to our kit get our new front seal pile the transmission fluid to it and we should be able to push this right in with our hands this seal has a little lip around it and there's a little burr cut all the way around inside this and that just push in and locks into place so it's real simple to put in and I always like to take a hammer and just go back and just uh, A lot of times, most people will put transmission fluid on these rotors. I like to just go ahead and lube them up real good with some trans gel or assembly lube. Same thing with the inner rotor. I don't like these parts to start off dry. And what I'm going to do is centering the uh, bore of the center gear with the bore where the torque converter spout comes through. Just go ahead and pack that inside with some assembly lube. And this will help get the uh, pump started. And get it to go ahead and start pumping fluid through your transmission so your clutches are getting wet right to start with. Apply some transmission fluid to the shaft and on the front here get all our holes lined up. bolts back in okay we'll go ahead and torque these down to 196 inch pounds kind of like to put them at the low end but I don't like to uh, over torque anything that's aluminum and we're going to take our piston and we're going to remove the old seals these are lip seals So they need to go in the correct way. This will be the last two seals in your package.
take a new outer seal. I'll go ahead and tell you, this takes quite a bit of practice and quite a bit of time to get this installed. You're dealing with two lip seals that's going to want to bow out on you at two surfaces at the same height. So we need to lubricate these real good. I may not even show all the installation of this because it is a little bit tedious and time consuming to get in. I'm going to lubricate our bore. Just take your time with it, and you can get it worked in there. Again, being careful not to cut that seal. If you feel it bind up or snag at any time, stop. Find another place to start at. And there it goes. Now we're going to line up our nine springs with these nine holes around here on the edge of the uh, spring housing. There's these three little tangs that'll catch under this lip right here. Okay, we're going to remove all the old ceiling rings from the back of the pump. These are a little bit stiff to work with. I'm going to try to get them off without breaking them in case. Uh, Something goes wrong with the new ones, trying to get them on. We could uh, use these again. 
because they'll seal pretty good. I'm just using the needle nose pliers to uh, pull the hook out. And like I say, these things are a bit stiff. old ones out. <laughs> Go in the bag and get the four new ones. bottom two. They're the toughest ones to get on. new ceiling rings they installed so at this time we're now ready to start putting all components back into the transmission uh, all, all assemblies are rebuilt and we can now install them first thing we're gonna start with is our case to output ring put some fluid in it Set it in with the lip. Hey, you can see the bearing is down there. It's working real good. Next is our output shaft and ring gear. We're going to apply fluid again on this channel and on the three ceiling rings. problem. Next we're going to install this uh, snap ring and all this does is just uh, gives the reverse band kind of like a shelf to sit on. sits right on there no problem now we're going to install our ring gear to direct clutch bearing okay, we'll put some fluid in it a little tang on the bottom goes down set that in place now we can set our direct clutch in Now we're going to install our planetary gear with the center support already uh, installed on it from previous. And there's this pin here for the overdrive servo that we got to clear. And there's a notch in the uh, 
as soon as the port you clear that. Rotate the bottom shaft, and that should fall in. Then we're going to lift up on it and rock it back and forth so that we can get the uh, drive into the uh, direct clutch hub. And when it is in correctly, all the way the top of this flange will be just under this snap ring groove but before we can uh, put the snap ring in we got to put this anti-clunk device back in place and it goes right here this falls through you have to pull all this back out and retrieve it put it all back in and start again now we're going to install our snap ring that holds all that in if you notice there's two tangs on this that are pointing upwards you want this tang to fall just right of this overdrive band pin and the other one to fall right up here in this area. It's important that you get those in the right spot. And there we have it. Our next part to install is our sun gear and you'll see there's some bearings here so we need to lubricate those in this shaft and that should turn freely and we'll get our drive shell lubricate these and lubricate this journal we'll get our bearing lubricate that the tang on the bottom goes down Get our drive hub put on. Get our immediate shaft. Drop down. And then our bearing. This bearing will go in with the narrow edge up. Right edge down. Right now we should be able to uh, install our forward and reverse and input shaft. We just drop it down in there. Have to rock it back and forth. Get everything to. Uh, Spline up in there. Then we got to get all those friction discs to line up, and then this reverse drum 
has to engage into the drive shell. And there we go. Now at this time we're going to get our new overdrive band and we're going to prepare it by adding some fluid to it just like we did our clutch disc. I'm going to take this anchor point here and get it under the uh, anchor down here on the bottom. There we go. That is now sitting in place. Okay, so now we need to repair our new overdrive servo. And we're going to use only the spring from the old one. And I also have a new snap ring to hold the overdrive servo in. We'll just take the uh, little e clip off. And we'll remove our pin. We'll get out our new pin. And our two new O-rings. We'll go ahead and install the O-ring on the large side. Then we'll put the uh, retainer on and then install the small o-ring we'll put a little fluid on those we'll install our spring and then we'll slide this back into the servo piston and then put our retainer clip back on and we're going to lube up this real good Bring it in and bring it over to our transmission. We'll come in here and lubricate these bores, lubricate the uh, center bore. Take our overdrive servo and we'll get it in there started. 
Now the pin is sticking in. Right through here, it's very important that you take this overdrive band and set it on that pin. And make sure it's still engaged in the back. And now we get our tool as before. Along with two long valve body bolts. Make sure we get the right holes here. Since the C-clip in the center of the pin is new, we don't have to worry about changing that one. Snapping in place. You should always replace this snap ring. Okay, we can go ahead and put our immediate friction and steels in. Or we'll put in this first plate, and there's a certain way that this goes in. Apply a friction disc, then a steel. Another friction. Steel. Another friction. Steel. Another friction, and then the last steel. And when this is done, you should be about even around this part of the case here. That lets me know that everything is engaged and is stacked up correctly. Then we're going to take this case silencer and install it right here. We'll get our pump gasket. A 
just like that. We'll apply a little fluid around. And when it comes to a transmission, a little can be a whole lot, so don't let that worry you. And we should better slide our pump right in. installed I'm going to come in here and talk our bolts 220 inch pounds And that, completes, and that completes the drive assembly of our 4 or 70 w transmission. Okay guys, that's going to conclude this part of the video. Our drivetrain is back installed in our transmission. And in the next video, what we got to do is uh, work in the valve body area to get the rest of the servos and accumulators put in. And then we'll tear down the uh, valve body itself and inspect it and clean it up and rebuild it and get it installed. So, hope you learned something on this. As you see, it's, it's not that bad. It's just a little, little time consuming and a little play to have to, you know, take care of. It's just... Uh, Anyway, uh, I hope you're learning something on this. Uh, it's not hard to do. It just takes a little time consuming. And if you do it piece by piece, you should have no problems rebuilding an automatic transmission. Like I say, I am no expert. I have never worked in a transmission shop. In fact, I have never worked in an automotive garage for public consumer products. I've always done mechanic work all my life starting off you know on farm tractors back when I was a wee lad and up to now to doing major engine overhauls and transmission rebuilds here in my home shop I don't do this nowhere else anyway uh, into the next video again I hope you learned something from this hope you got something from it we'll catch you in the next one bye now